Page 63, this is a review. You are going to have a quiz coming up. The quiz will be on Monday, unfortunately, but we're going to spend an extra day reviewing. In Enhanced 3, we only reviewed the one day and quiz the very next day. Um, and here, I'm, I'm taking it a little bit extra. I'm giving you guys extra time to review this concept. So um, this is not the same as what your homework is going to be tonight. Your homework is going to be on Google Classroom, or it is already there. It looks just like this. It's just going to have different numbers, okay? So uh, for this one, um, this is regular math three. So we are not going to be doing numbers 10 and 11. In enhanced three, we do those. In regular three, we do not because we are skipping uh, all of activity uh, four, okay? Activity four is, is, not, is an enhanced three topic. It's not a regular three topic, okay? So we're going to start with this. This test is square. It says congruent squares of length x are cut from the corners of a 10 inch by 15 inch piece of cardboard to create a box without a lid. So think of like going to Home Depot and you need to get moving boxes. They're not put together already. That would take up too much space. They're flat. You have to put them together yourself. Okay. So think of this as like a flat piece of cardboard. And so basically what they did is they took this flat piece of cardboard. I'm just going to make a rectangle out of it. So I need you guys to do the same. Okay. And they cut the corners out of it. So these corners have been cut out of it. They're not there. Okay. So if we're not there, then we can't account for that space. So they told us that the piece of cardboard is a 10 inch by 15 inch piece. So I can say that the shorter side is the 10 inch side and the longer side is the 15 inch side. And it's a rectangle, you know, it's, it's a rectangle. So the other opposite side is 15, the other opposite side from the 10 is a 10, okay? But remember, like I said, those four corners of the uh, cardboard are cut out. They're not there to cut something out. What mathematical operation is that? Subtraction, right. So they gave us this right here. I didn't want to draw over it too much. They said that this edge is the length of x and this edge is the length of x. This is a little square, okay? And so that means I can say that this, I'll put the x on the outside. This is x and this is x, okay? And that means that this is x and this is x. But remember, they were cut out. They were subtracted. How many x's are on one side? Two. They were cut out. So we have to cut out two x's. So in other words, we need to subtract 2x from the 15, and we need to subtract 2x from the 10. Let's draw a new picture. I'm not a really great artist. I'm sure some of you guys are way better than I am. Um, but I am going to try to draw this three-dimensionally. So I'm going to try to draw my box. Think of taking these flaps and folding them up to make the box without a lid. So this will be how tall it is. And then this will be the length. I remember I took an art class when I was in junior high, and I remember loving it. It was mostly figuring out how to do the shadings with when light hits certain objects at a certain angle. I thought that was so cool. Right, I'm doing my box dimension so we can see like the inside of that box. So there's my box without a lid. If you can't draw it, no big deal, okay? Um, so the width is the 10 minus 2x. How long it is, is the 15 minus 2x. And how tall it is, is well, it has to do with this flap. These flaps on the end, they get folded up to make the box. Just like these ones on the side get folded up to make the box. And the length of that flap is x. So that means that the height of the box is x. So there are the dimensions okay, of my box. So we dealt with a box the, in 3.1. We're mailing a package. Okay. It says write an expression in number one in terms of x for each. So the height of the box, well, we know it's, it's x tall. The length is typically the longer side, so the length will be 15 minus 2x. And the width of the box is 10 minus 2x. Okay? All right, so we answered number 
number one. Number one, good. Number two, it says write a function v of x for the volume. I want to highlight the word volume of the box in terms of x. Leave your answer in factored form. I'm going to underline it. Leave it in factored form. So the x, the 15 minus 2x, the 10 minus 2x, those are the height, length, and width. Well, volume, we'll put it over here. Volume of a rectangular prism, because that's what a box is, it's a rectangular prism, is length times width times what? Height. All right, we learned that back in elementary school. Well, we have all those things. We have the length, we have the width, we have the height. When we multiply things together, does the order in which we multiply matter? No, it doesn't. Is three times five the same as five times three? Yeah, so order of multiplication doesn't matter. So I'm going to put these in whatever order I want. I like to be very methodical with things, as you guys know. It's got to have a logical process. So number two, I'm going to write over here. They wanted us to name it v of x, like function notation, like an f of x. And my height, length, and width are these three things. It doesn't have to go in the L, W, H order. I'm going to put the x first because it's just one term. Times, I'm just going to go in order. The next one would be the height, or sorry, the length of the box, 15 minus 2x. And then the next one would be the width, 10 minus 2x. Aw. <laughs> it's okay. It's the HD line. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, take the little one. It's good. No worries. <laughs> All right. So there is our volume. We have height times length times width. But like I said, the order doesn't matter when you're multiplying. It does when you're subtracting and it does when you're dividing, but when you're adding or multiplying, the order doesn't matter, okay? All right, so we've got our volume, that's number two. So that part's done. So we got number one, we got number two. So on to number three. It says express the domain of v of x as an inequality in interval notation and in set notation. So remember how I told you guys, you only have to pick one. I'm gonna show you all three, but we're only going to, when you do this on your quiz or even on the homework tonight, you only have to pick one method that you like. Pick inequality or interval notation or set notation. You don't have to do all three, okay? So for number three, I'm not going to write number three yet, but to, there's some work we got to do. You see how we have these factors? To find the domain, we need to find the zeros. We did this in 3.1. So we got to break each of these factors apart and set them each equal to what? Zero. Right. So x equals zero. Oh, we got one. That was easy. Didn't even have to do anything except write it. 15 minus 2x equals zero. And then 10 minus 2x equals zero. All right, and we just have to solve for x and find our zeros. So first of all, we've got 15 minus 2x. How can I get rid of that negative 2x? Add 2x. Sorry, I didn't hear add yet. Add the 2x to both sides. So we'll get 15 is equal to 2x. Now we got to solve for x, so how can we get rid of that 2 now? Now we divide. Divide both sides by 2. Now, 2 doesn't go into 15 evenly. It's going to be a decimal. But what is half of 15? 7.5. So x equals 7.5. So there's our next 0. And let's find the third one. How would I get rid of that negative 2x? Add the 2x. Add the 2x. Right. Plus 2x. Plus 2x. So 10 is equal to 2x. And now how do I get rid of the 2? Divide it. Divide both sides by 2. Now 2 goes into 10 evenly. How many times? 5. So x equals 5. So these are my three zeros. Now, one of these zeros is going to be a throwaway zero. Okay? Because here's what we've got. I'm just going to draw a very basic graph. Is volume or height ever going to be negative for a box? Or for anything? No. no. So it's always going to be positive. Okay? So remember where these are. Zero obviously is the origin. Five, we'll put, we'll put five right here. 
and 7.5 is obviously bigger than 5, so it's just further down the number line. Okay, those are the zeros. We know zeros are on the x-axis. We have an x times an x times an x. An x times a negative 2x times a negative 2x. That would be, what's negative 2 times negative 2? 4. So that's a 4x squared, and then we multiply in a third x, that's a 4x cubed. So we know that this is a cubic. So we know that it's a positive x cubed, it's a positive cubic. So we know the end behavior is going to be down on the left and up on the right. We did this in 3.2. So on the very far left zero, we know it's going down. On the very far right zero, we know it's going up. Okay. So we know, and I'm going to fake the rest of this graph to connect the rest of it. We know it has to go up before it comes back down to that 5. I just don't know how high up. And then we know it has to dip below the x-axis, come back down before it hits that 7.5. We don't know how far down, though. So we know it's doing this, okay? And now we got to think of volume. Remember how we just said that the volume and the height of a box will never be uh, negative? So it will never be in this negative zone. So the negative zone is down here. This is the negative side of the y-axis, where this little pink part dips below the x. So that part doesn't make sense for this situation. So that means that I can only look at from zero to five, because this is the part where the little loop is above the x-axis, where the volume and the height would be a positive number. So the 7.5 is my throwaway zero. It doesn't make sense for the situation. It's a zero for the function, but the part of the function that we're looking at is the only part where the volume and the height would be positive, not negative, okay? So my domain then is from zero to five. So that answers number three. So there are three ways to write the domain. I'm gonna start with inequality. So I'm gonna put I-N-E-Q. So as an inequality, you still use capital D for domain. And we're dealing with x values, and they're from zero to five. So zero less than x less than five. That's as an inequality. Remember, you do not have to do all three. The next, for your notes, definitely write them though. In interval notation, I'll put INT for interval. You still use a capital D for domain, but because we can't equal the zero or the five, it's just parentheses zero to five. It means the same thing as the inequality, of course. And then in set notation, it's just the fancy inequality notation. You still use capital D for domain, squiggly line bracket, X, and then the bar, the vertical bar for such that, zero less than X less than five. So again, you only have to pick one of those to do. You don't have to do the domain in three different ways. Pick one, because it still represents that the domain is from zero to five, okay? So you only have to pick one. All right, number four is to sketch a graph. This one doesn't count, because this one was, we faked a lot of it, okay? And we don't need the 7.5 because that part of the graph loops below the x-axis. We don't want negatives, okay? So we need to do a new graph, but we have a domain. The domain is from zero to five. So what numbers are between zero and five? One, two, three, four, right. So we know what numbers to try for x. So for number four, we're gonna put it over here. Remember, we only want a positive y-axis and a positive x-axis. And you always need to label your graph. So we need um, the height of the box is our x. The volume of the box is our y, okay? And let's see, the height, we know it's gonna, the domain is from zero to five. So one, two, three, four, five. The volume, we don't know. We got to investigate that. So, I need a t-chart. We got to go old school. We know what numbers to try because our domain is only from 0 to 5. We know at 0, the y value is 0 because it was a 0. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. 
5. We know at 5, that was also a 0, so we know the y value is a 0. So we already know 0, 0, and 5, 0 on our graph. We know it's going to go up like a parabola, we just don't know how high up it's going to go. So to find the y values, you got to plug these x values in to our function. So plugging it in for x, well, plugging in a 1, that's just a 1. I'm going to write 1. Parentheses mean multiplication, so times. 15 minus 2 times 1. What's 2 times 1? What's 15 minus 2? 13. So that's going to be a 13. Times. 10 minus 2 times 1. What's 2 times 1? What's 10 minus 2? 8. 8. So 1 times 13 times 8. I need my calculator. 1 times 13. Well, is the 1 going to change anything, guys? No. So I just need to type in 13 times 8, which is 104. So we know that we have a, a volume of 104. Okay. When we plug in a 2, well, 2 for x, so I'm just going to write down that 2, times 15 minus 2 times 2. What's 2 times 2? What's 15 minus 4? 11. And then 10 minus 2 times 2. So 10 minus 4, 6. So I know 2 times 11 is 22. 22 times 6 is 132. Okay. Then number 3. Plugging in a 3 for x, we're going to have a 3 first. So we'll, we'll write that down 3 times. And then 15 minus 2 times 3. What's 2 times 3? Uh, or 6. 6. What's 15 minus 6? 9. 9. So that's going to be a 9. 3 times 9 times the next one, 10 minus 2 times 3. Well, we know 2 times 3 is 6. What's 10 minus 6? 4. So 3 times 9 times 4. All right. So now we just have to multiply those together. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 times 4 is 108. And then plugging in the 4 for x. So 4 times 15 minus 2 times 4. What is 2 times 4? What's 15 minus 8? 7. 4 times 7. And then we know that 2 times 4 is 8. What's 10 minus 8? 2. So 4 times 7 times 2. 4 times 7 is 28. 28 times 2 is 56. Okay. So we know the highest number of our y values are, is uh, 132. So we need to figure out how we want to scale our axis. I'm just going to keep it as, as basic as possible. So I'm going to count by... Um, 50s. We'll go 50, 100, 150. Keep it super basic. Okay? So when x is 1, the y is 104. So 1, 104 will be just above the 100 line. 2, 132 will be closer to the 150 line. 3, 108 should be slightly higher than when it was a 104. And then 456 just above the 50 line. And now we can see our curve. Nice. Number five is the next one. It says in number five, use a graphing calculator. Uh-oh, what do they mean by that? What does this mean? Desmos. Desmos, desmos.com to find the coordinates of the maximum point. So this is where we're going to take it to Desmos. So you're going to need your Chromebooks out, okay? So you can pull those out and go to desmos.com, okay? We're going to find that maximum point and we're going to interpret the meaning of the maximum point. So here, our max point 
is 132. Okay, that's what we got. But it might be different. So let's take a look at Desmos and see what Desmos says. Okay, so I'm going to switch this over back to my screen. And uh, FYI, we're probably not going to finish this, so that means that this won't be homework yet. You can get a start on it because it will be tomorrow night then, but um, we'll, we'll have to finish this tomorrow because we only have a few minutes left. But I do want to show you Desmos. So please no packing up yet. Remember, not until three minutes before the bell. All right, so Desmos.com or Google Desmos and hit graphing calculator that's what you needed to go to and it should look like this right so in that very first bar where there the where the cursor is blinking that's where you're going to type in the function so the function we have that we wrote down in number two was v of x equals x times 15 minus 2x times 10 minus 2x okay now in desmos they only have x's and y's there's no function notation there's no v of x in desmos so instead of the V of X, you need to put Y equals and then all of that, okay? So that's what we're gonna type in. So up here, I'm gonna type in, there's a little keyboard down here that, that might help or you can use your actual letters and numbers on the, on the keyboard itself. So Y equals, I need X and then I need parentheses, 15 minus uh, 2X. I need to close parentheses, start another one and then 10 minus 2x, and then close that parentheses. And then you can see something happened on the, the graph behind, but it's really scrunched up, okay? So this is where the domain comes in. See that wrench in the upper right-hand corner? Hit that wrench, okay? And you can see there's the domain, that's the x-axis, the range is the y-axis. We didn't write down what the range is, but we can change it still. So the x, it was from zero to what number? Five. So change that negative 10 to a zero and change that positive 10 to a five. And we saw something happen behind us. I do wanna change the y-axis. Are we dealing with negative numbers? No. So change that negative value to a zero. And we know based on our graph that we weren't dealing with numbers like six. Our numbers were much higher. What was the highest number on our graph? One, well, yeah, we went up to 150, but the highest was a 132. But I like yours, Natalie. Let's put 150 as our high. And now we can see behind us, and you can tap out of that, what the curve did. And it looks exactly what we graphed on paper by hand. The max point is the one at the top. So if you click on the top, just somewhere at the top, a point will appear. And if you tap it again, if it didn't show already, it will show... Um, what the coordinate is. So there's the coordinate, 1.962 comma 132.038. Write that one down for number five. Put the coordinate, parentheses, 1.962 comma 132.038. So here, number five. Again, 1.962, 132.038 on your papers. If we were to round this number, 1.962, to the nearest whole number, what would it round to? To two. And 132.038 to the nearest whole number, what would it be? Isn't that our high number that we got on our table? Yeah. So we done good, okay? So our max point is pretty much what the max point is Actually, it's just that this is the exact. It's 1.962. To round it, we would we would get what we got. Okay, we didn't use decimals when we plugged in for x. All right, so that was number five. Okay, so this is Desmos. On your quiz that you're going to take next week, so obviously it won't be Monday. It'll be on Tuesday. Um, you're going to be going on to Desmos during the quiz, and you're going to be typing in your function and setting your domain and range so that you can see it properly, and then tapping that max point to find that max point. You're going to be doing all those things. Okay. So to go back to the paper real quick so that we can wrap it up, let me get back over here. I would keep that tab there because it'll, it'll help you. So it was 
I always have a notebook handy. So for number seven, it says to use polynomial multiplication. So we're going to take it back to math two last year. and We're going to multiply out our polynomial. Uh, we have to rewrite v of x, the volume function from number two, as a polynomial in standard form. So I want to highlight the words standard form. What we have in number two is factor form. We underlined, I underlined it in green highlighter, leave your answer in factor form. So in number two, this is factor form. So when we get to number seven, we're gonna change it into standard form. So to do that, we have to rewrite number two for number seven. We're gonna start with that. So for number seven, I'm gonna label it d of x equals, and I'm just copying down what I wrote for number two, x times 15 minus 2x times 10 minus 2x, okay? And we're going to review how to multiply these things. So first things first, there's three factors here, x, 15 minus 2x, and 10 minus 2x, three things. And you can't multiply three things at once. You can only multiply two at a time, two at a time. So I recommend saving the little x for the end for last. Just don't forget about them. A lot of students like to forget about that little x. So I'm using the square brackets to show I'm going to multiply those two binomial factors first. So when we multiply, what property do we use? Distributive, Distributive property. So first of all, I have to do 15 times 10. Anyone know what 15 times 10 is in their head? 150. And then what's 15 times negative 2x? Negative 30x. Okay, now it's time to do the inners. What's negative 2x times 10? Negative 20x. And what's negative 2x times negative 2x? 4x. 4x. Squared, right, x times x is x squared. Okay, so we have some cleaning up to do. We have a negative 30x and a negative 20x. They're both negative, so add them and keep the negative, and what do you get? Negative 50x. Now, we need to write this in standard form, so in front of that negative 50x, we need to put the 4x squared, and then after the negative 50x, we have to put a positive 150. And then put parentheses back on that. We've got a trinomial there. Now remember that x I told you not to forget? Bring them down, because we still got to multiply them in. And now we're going to do that. And so now when we distribute the x, what's going to happen is everything's going to go up a degree. What's x times 4x squared? 4x cubed. 4x cubed. What's x times negative 50x? Negative 50x squared. What's x times 150? Negative x. Right, and so we multiplied it out, and we have v of x. Remember we talked about this. It's supposed to be a cubic. We multiplied just the x's yesterday to see if it was a positive or a negative cubic, and we saw it was a positive 4x cubed. So we already knew from yesterday that we were going to have an x cubed as our leading term, okay? So here is the same function. It's not in factored form anymore. It is in standard form. Standard form is always listing the terms in order from highest degree to lowest degree from left to right. So we got it. It's in standard form now. We multiply. What I've noticed students doing is students have a tendency to over multiply or, to, or try to combine terms that are not alike. So remember, to be a like term, they've got to have the same letter and the same degree. Like an x is not the same as an x squared, okay? So we have to make sure we understand the difference between like terms and not like terms, okay? If you ever are not sure, just ask me and I'll tell you, okay? Just not on a quiz or a test because you got to know that by that time, all right? Number eight says, consider the graph of v of x over the set of real numbers. Describe the end behavior of the function using arrow notation. All right, so for the end behavior, that's number eight. We'll put it down here. 
When we looked at the graph on Desmos, this is what we saw. We have, and we're just gonna do a rough sketch real quick for what we saw on Desmos. We know that we had a zero at zero, zero. We know that we had a zero at five, and there was another one at 7.5, right? We're just gonna do our rough sketch. So yesterday we saw, after we graphed it, that it really was what we said. It was going down on the left, that's a positive cubic, and it goes up, down, and up again, okay? So remember what end behavior is. It's all about the ends. All we care about is what's happening on the ends. So I'm highlighting those ending arrows, okay? So even if you didn't know what it was gonna look like just by knowing the first term, 4x cubed, we saw it on Desmos. So you should be able to confirm what your ideas were by looking at the graph on Desmos. It's down on the left and up on the right. It's going down on the left, up on the right. So if you have to explain it like that, that's okay. It doesn't get you full credit on a question like this. You want, they want you to use the arrow notation. So when you use arrow notation, it always starts off as, as x approaches negative infinity. And then as x approaches positive infinity. So they go from the left to the right. We always go left and then right. Going to the negative infinity is going towards the left of the graph along the x-axis. Going towards positive infinity is going towards the right on the x-axis, okay? So, you gotta ask yourselves, as we're going to negative infinity, that means we're going to the left to the left, what's the graph doing? So look at the arrow on the graph, it's going down. Going down means it's going to which infinity? Negative, negative infinity. So then we would say, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity, because it's going down on the left. Then, for as x approaches positive infinity, now we're going to the right, to the right, and we look at what the graph's doing. It's going up. So that means up is which infinity? Positive infinity. So that means y is approaching positive infinity. Okay? So it's actually going negative, negative, positive, positive in this case. Okay? We shouldn't see the same end behavior on the y's because it's not the same. We're going in opposite direction, one up, one down, okay? So for me, it helps to have a visual. It helps to have a rough sketch so that I can write this out. That's what works for me. If what works for you is just knowing which side is up and which side is down, then just know that the y would be on the left, but negative infinity because it's going down. The y on the right is going to positive infinity because it's going up. But the arrow uh, notation always starts the x's just like this. That's why I wrote it in a different color, okay? So there is our arrow notation for number eight for the end behavior. But like I said, if you get stuck on how to write the arrow notation and you're not sure if that's right, then at least describe in words which side's going up and which side's going down. And you'll still get points for that. It, like I said, it won't be full credit, but it, some credit is better than no credit. And then number nine, let's take a look at number nine. It says use long division or synthetic division to find the quotient. So we are going to divide. And for this example, I'm going to do both long division and synthetic division, okay? I'm gonna start with long division, so it's my favorite. And obviously I need more space, so I'm gonna use this paper here, so for number nine. So it is x to the fifth plus 3x cubed, wait a minute, it went from an x to the fifth to an x to the third. Is it missing something here? Yeah. Right, it's missing the fourth degree. So what should I put next? Zero x to the fourth. Got it. Zero x to the fourth. You have to hold its place value at a zero. Then we could put the 3x cubed, so plus 3x cubed. And then it goes negative 4x squared. And then plus 2x plus 6. And then this is all over x minus 1. So when you have to rewrite a problem, it helps you if you rewrite it and you notice the missing terms and you include that in your rewrite, okay? We are going to have to rewrite this again. So, I mean, I, I could have just gone straight to this next part, but I didn't. But that's all right. So 
So x to the fifth, zero x to the fourth, three x cubed, negative four x squared, plus two x, plus six. Goes inside the box, because that's my dividend. And then outside the box is gonna go the x minus one. And we're gonna do this long division style, okay? So I got my colors ready. The first thing that we have to ask ourselves is what can we multiply by x to get x to the fifth? 4x. Not 4x. x to the fourth. So we're going to line it up over the x to the fourth, keeping that place value there. And then we do this next step, which is called distribution. distribution. Right, we're going to distribute x to the fourth times x gives us the x to the fifth that we wanted. x to the fourth times negative one is a negative x to the fourth. And then what do we do? Flip the signs, this becomes negative, this becomes positive. x to the fifth minus x to the fifth is zero. Zero x to the fourth plus one x to the fourth is how many x to the fourths? It's just x to the fourth, right? It's just one x to the fourth. You don't need to write the one because it's just a one. If you want to, if you prefer that, it's no big deal, you can, okay? All right, then we gotta bring down the next term. So plus three x cubed, and we gotta start this all over again. This time, our new goal is this new first term of x to the fourth. So we gotta ask ourselves, what do we multiply by x to get x to the fourth? x to the third, so plus x to the third, and then we have to distribute. So x to the third times x is how we get x to the fourth. x to the third times negative one is just a negative x to the third. And then what do we do? Change the signs. Right, so that becomes negative, that becomes positive. The x to the fourths cancel like they're supposed to. And now how many x to the thirds are there gonna be? Four. Four. Three x cubed plus one x cubed is four x cubed. And then bring down the next term, a negative four x squared. And so our new term is now the positive four x cubed. This is what we need to get. So we have to ask ourselves, what do we multiply by x to get four x cubed? Four x to the second, right? So plus four x squared, and then distribute. 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. 4x squared times negative 1 is a negative 4x squared. And then what do we do? Change the signs. So that becomes negative, that becomes positive. The 4x cubes cancel like they're supposed to. And yeah, so do the 4x squared. Sometimes that's going to happen. That's okay bring down the next term, it's just a plus two x, but we also, we need two terms, so we also have to bring down the six, whoops, went too far, plus six, because we need two terms, and the other two terms that we had, they both canceled out to zero, okay? So our new first term is this positive two x that we need to get, so what do we multiply by x to get two x? A two, all right, we just need to multiply by two, so plus, 2, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Now do we, what do we do? Change the signs, negative, positive, the 2x's cancel, and what's my remainder going to be? 8, 6 plus 2 is 8. That's my remainder. It's a positive 8, so when we go up to our answer, we're going to put plus 8 over, what's the divisor? x minus 1. And then there is my solution. Okay. So that is the problem using long division. Now if long division is not your jam, that's okay. We could do it another way. We're going to do it with synthetic division. I'm actually going to tear this page out. Okay. And I'm gonna keep in mind that we are gonna use that zero placeholder because when we use synthetic division, we need coefficients. So the coefficient on the x to the fifth is one, the coefficient on the x to the fourth is zero, 
On x to the third, it's 3. On x squared, it's negative 4. On x, it's 2. And then the constant is 6. So we need 1, 0, 3, negative 4, 2, and 6. Okay? So this is still number 9, which now I'm using synthetic division. We need a corner box. Okay? And like I said, the coefficients are 1, 0, 3, negative 4, 2, and 6. I want you guys to have both of these methods in your notes. You can just have another example. All right? Some of you guys are, are a little confused on the steps. Okay? So I need the number that goes in the corner box. Anyone know what it's going to be? 1. It comes from here, right? When we set x minus 1 equal to 0, we have to add the 1 over. And that's how we're going to get x is equal to 1. Okay? So this is what's going to go in the corner box, a 1, a positive 1. It's always the opposite sign of the number in the divisor. Okay? So we need a 1. The first step is to take the first term and do what with it? Bring it down. You gotta bring it down first. And then what is the second step? To multiply, right? One times one is what? One. And then what do we do? We add. Zero plus one is what? And then do it again. What's one times one? Three plus one. Four times one. Oh, what's going to happen there? Cancel. So cancel the zero. What's zero times one? Zero. zero. Two plus zero is two. Two times one? Eight. And then eight. Right. And it should be the same remainder as the long division, right? If it's not, then we did something wrong. So this is our remainder. The last number is always your remainder. If the last number is zero, all that means is that there's no remainder. It divided evenly. So remember what we started with. Oops, where's my paper? We started with a degree of 5. So now our answer is going to be 1 degree less. So what degree is our answer going to be at? x to the 4th. So this 1 represents 1x to the 4th. Then the next number would be 1x cubed. And then the next number is a positive 4x squared. And then it says a 0x. But do we need to put a 0x? No, we don't need to hold its place anymore. So skip the x term, and then plus 2, that's our constant, and then our remainder is plus 8 over the divisor, x minus 1. And it's the same answer we got on the other method, right? Right, it better be, otherwise, what are we doing? Okay, so remember I told you guys that for regular math three, we don't do number 10 and 11. Okay, because we didn't do activity four at all, the binomial theorem, so you don't know anything about that or Pascal's triangle. So we're done. So that is the review. So what I need you guys to do now is this is your guide to help